So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch, and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged because we're all on to the next big thing already. So, let's do something about it. Let's take a look at a smartphone whose genetics have drifted a little from their supposed perfection of just a few months ago. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, this is the HTC Droid DNA, and this is episode 14 of After the Buzz. Verizon said it wanted to return to the roots of the Droid brand when it dropped the smartphone on us in November, hence the name DNA. HTC said the DNA was the ultimate droid, and its hardware did embody Verizon's droid brand to a T, with muscle car-inspired styling and a red and black theme. And with an aggressive marketing push and wider availability, the DNA could have been a superstar. But instead, just four months later, HTC is releasing another flagship superphone, the new and improved HTC One. So no matter how good the DNA is, it's still automatically now an older device. So let's see just how well this newly minted old timer has held up. Aesthetically, the DNA's styling has held up nicely, both because it hasn't been that long since launch and because HTC went minimalistic on the design. The soft touch finish on the back and the Gorilla Glass 2 on the front are good armor against impacts, but as always, the latter isn't infallible. We've seen at least one shattered droid DNA screen on the street since launch. HTC Future proofed some elements very nicely. The 1080p display was the first of its kind to hit the US market, and it's just as beautiful now as it was at launch. Other aspects aren't aging so gracefully. Using the same underwhelming camera optics as the One X of 2012 probably wasn't the best choice from a longevity standpoint, especially considering how hard HTC will market the new Ultra Pixel and Zoe functionality of its new camera. And speaking of longevity, the embedded 2020 mAh battery continues to deliver performance just below average, and the more often the screen stays on, the worse it gets, obviously. Now, that high-res display is worth the power cost, it's gorgeous, but batteries don't improve over time, they degrade. And not being able to swap the battery in the field means we've made good use of our portable power packs. You still have to be okay with this if you're going to invest in the DNA. On the subject of degradation over time, it's incredible how quickly HTC's Sense skin has aged in the past few months. With stock Android looking better and better with each OTA update, and Samsung's TouchWiz making up for its ugliness with responsiveness and its sheer added functionality, Sense has stagnated. It's less laggy on the DNA than on other devices, but the visual style we used to think of as refined now seems somewhat archaic, especially in the face of Sense 5 on the new HTC One. Sense 4 Plus now just seems old, with its insistence on tainting every action with this mechanical click sound and its large but inaccurate stock keyboard. They're minor annoyances, but they grate on the nerves quickly. Plus, this version of Sense doesn't take advantage of the added resolution of the display, so you're still faced with the same amount of information you'd get on any other jumbo screen smartphone. It's wonderful for some functions, don't get us wrong, but the skin inhibits the beautiful display more than it sets it free. You're still left with the need to root the phone to get the most out of its capabilities, which is a shame. Ultimately, this build of Sense was crafted for a time when Android was ugly and needed to be covered up. That's not the case anymore. And unless and until an OTA update comes along bringing the new Sense 5, the DNA will remain a beautiful car driven by a rapidly aging chauffeur. None of this should detract from the Droid DNA as a capable, reliable, and in many ways a beautiful smartphone. Its gorgeous display and the timeless beauty of its minimalistic build will serve it well in 2013, and if you're on Verizon and considering one, you could definitely do much worse, especially considering the carrier hasn't yet announced plans to pick up the new HTC One, for reasons that might be obvious. But with the arrival of that beautiful successor, it now seems clear that the DNA is forever doomed to be the also-ran, the smartphone that was almost a flagship. The short burst of royal treatment it did get is most assuredly over. 
And for a device that had as much potential as the Droid DNA, and which actually does deliver a solidly good overall experience, that's sad. Folks, that's going to do it for episode 14 of After the Buzz. Follow us in all the usual places. Subscribe in the usual manner. Stay tuned for more from Pocket Now, and thanks for watching. I like that one. Let's stick it with it. Stick it. Suck it to me, baby. <laughs> Subscribe in all the usual places. Subscribe. The damn phone unlocked when I held the lock screen for long enough. That's stupid. That's a truck. Do you know what a truck is?